Hello everyone and thanks for coming back to the channel. This is the Atmospheric Adventures Aeolus. Featuring an F4 flight controller with OSD, 12 amp form 1 ESC, HGL Tech Flame Motors, 1104, 7500 KV. The DC FPV camera, and here is the VTX-02. You can only run 2.4 inch props. It weighs 79.69 grams. Appears to be 118 millimeters. Bottom plate I selected is 2.58 millimeters. A bit of a clarification on the props, you can put 2.5 inch props in the back, but on the front they just won't clear the pot. This is a stretched X-frame, and it's a shrunken down version of its bigger brother. And th there's a few things that I think you need to know. One, this build is pretty, pretty tough, pretty tight, because you've got essentially no access to many of the things that you have to figure out how to mount in here. And so therefore repairs are going to be a pain. Just getting this top uh, printed piece down, um, that, that's a fair struggle there, especially here at the rear where you, you need to have your battery lead come out and you've also got to keep that nut down in there. This has got a, like a 3D printed, well part of the print is the nut holder and then you've got to get the nut up through there and get it threaded and get it started. Uh, it's somewhat similar in the front. It, it's just a bit of a struggle. Uh, as far as this camera, I, I don't recommend this camera. This is the, the DC, I think is how you say it. Um, it came from Amazon. And the image, when the light is very, very normalized, in other words, it's the same. The lighting doesn't change from shades to brights. Um, when the lighting's very even, that's the better word. When the lighting's very even, the camera does pretty well. But when the lighting changes abruptly, like in my backyard, when there's leaves on the trees, I've actually not... I've actually delayed this video quite a bit just because I kept tinkering with this thing. When there were leaves on the trees and then the sun would shine through it, as you would fly through there, I don't. it comes through in the flight video a little bit, but what doesn't come through in the flight video is that feeling in the goggles is kind of shocking, almost as though a bright light had just been flashed in your eyes real hard because you're, you're traveling from darks to lights and it's trying to adjust, but when it gets to the brights, there's something about that and how it it really kind of kept me from flying very aggressively I felt felt so that's something you need to be aware of I would say if you're looking at this camera only get this camera uh, for some other reason than performance maybe you like that it's got a purple housing on it whatever the case may be I'm not a fan of this camera I'm gonna stick to other CCD micro cameras uh, I had more than one set of motors on this because I really didn't feel I was getting the performance out of it that I expected 
It's not particularly heavy. Let's weigh it. So we've got about 79, almost 80 grams. And if we care to compare that to the Eclair, which is 80 grams, just slightly heavier, this one flies heavier. And I think this is, I'm sorry to keep, I think this is the second talking video I've ever had in a while. Instead of saving all this information up and then bringing it out once every 10 months like I did the last time, I think a little sprinkles of this would be better. But I think this one flew heavier. It flew fine. It just, it felt like there should be more. And especially with the different motors I was trying, you know, I've tried these flames with the 7500s, um, which are supposed to be pretty good motors. I've tried some other motors that were also pretty well, well known and, and respected, but I, I just didn't feel like I was getting out of it. And the other part could have been the ESC response, but it felt like it flew heavy. And I think that has to do with the uh, disc unloading. So these are our discs, if you're not familiar with that, and air is coming down in on all directions outside of up. It's thrust is coming down in some manner, whether it's at an angle or straight down off these props. And I'm no experts in aerodynamics, but what has been discussed in a number of other videos is how air, it comes off the ends of the props quite a bit. And so when it doesn't have anywhere to go, that reduces your thrust values. So like in something like the Eclair, we've got all these holes in it so that thrust can come down and go through those holes. It's got somewhere to go so you don't have a lot of air turbulence. Whereas something like this, you get a lot of air turbulence where that pod is. So for me... I think when I'm looking at frames and vehicles, I'm going to stay away from pods. I just don't think they're the way to go. I think they'll probably work fine on bigger units where you can get the prop out farther away. I still think there's a slight disadvantage, but I can't claim that I know that for certain. But it seems like if the disc unloading theory that the, the air comes down and is creating a, a disturbance here is, is accurate, that would explain why this flew heavier than I thought it should. So uh, I, that's really all I have to say about this. It's a very tight build. It's a very, very challenging build. It flies fine. Uh, you'll get to see the, the prop in view. This is the camera angle that I did fly at. Um, it, it's just difficult to work on, but they do have some really cool 3D printed designs. You can get them with like spikes or a shark fin and various other things, um, some cool designs. So you can add a lot of personal flair to it. it. just doesn't quite fly as good as I'd hoped. Okay, if you have any comments, questions, suggestions, or otherwise, please leave those in the section down below. I appreciate your time.